so this says a batter at spring training camp hits a baseball with an initial velocity of 90 feet per second at an angle of 35 degrees from the horizontal. Assume that the batter makes contact with the ball 2.5 feet above home plate. So that's the situation. Here are the parametric equations for projectile motion. You do not need to memorize this. Uh, <clears throat> if they were to give you a question like this, I'm almost 100% positive that they would give you the equations. They're not expecting you to memorize these. Okay? But, again, let me just remind you, these kind of make sense. Because if x, horizontal, x and horizontal always correspond to cosine. The y, vertical, always corresponds to sine. So, um, that just wanted to remind you of that. The V sub 0 stands for the initial velocity, or T. Um, T is time, of course. When we look at the Y equation, I notice that this is negative 1 half. G is the force of gravity, okay? Because um, we're talking about <clears throat> gravity pulls down on objects, so that affects the vertical component. Um, now, there are two different values that we could use. If your units are in feet, you use 32. If your units are in meters, you use 9.8. Um, then we've got T squared, so the vertical component is a quadratic. The horizontal component is uh, linear. We've got the initial velocity again, the sine of the angle, T, and then this plus H on the end is the fifth and initial height. Okay? It may start on the ground, then you wouldn't have a plus, plus H. Uh, this one does. This one is 2.5 feet above home plate, so that would be the H, is the 2.5. Okay, so let's write our parametric equations to model the motion of the ball. The horizontal distance, okay, how far horizontally it is from home plate, would be x of t is equal to the initial velocity, 90, times the cosine of our angle, 35 degrees times t. Now, I don't know whether they want us to multiply this out or not, so I'm going to go ahead and, and give us that version. Okay, make sure that you're in degree mode. When you're plugging in degrees into your trig function, you need to be in degree mode. The parametric versus polar versus function does not matter for this part. That's most, that pretty much only matters when you're graphing. Okay, so 73.724t is approximately our horizontal part of the parametric equation. It is a linear function that is describing its horizontal distance from where it started. The vertical part, the y of t, is equal to negative one and a half. What are we going to use for G? 32 or 9.8? 32, because our velocity is in feet per second, so we're going to use the feet per second squared um, for the G. That's times T squared, plus the initial velocity again, 90. This time it's the sine of the angle, times T, plus 2.5. Um, honestly, I think this may have been the point in time when I started, I didn't used to put a little tail on my keys, uh, but it's very handy when you have T's and pluses so you don't get those mixed up. So I put a little tail on my T's so that I know the difference. Okay, negative 1 half times 32 is negative 16 T squared plus 90 times the sine of 35. is 51.622t plus 2.5. Okay, so the, whole, uh, the vertical part of the parametric equation, the vertical component of this projectile is quadratic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Negative 1.5 times 32. Okay, so those, those are our parametric equations, so the horizontal and the vertical. So question B says, how high is the ball after 1.5 seconds? How are we going to figure that out? 
plug it into the Y because it's the height. The Y is the vertical component. So we're going to do Y of 1.5. So negative 16 times 1.5 squared plus, y'all know how I like my exact answer, so I'm going to do the answer times 1.5 plus 2.5. That gives us approximately 43.933, what units? Feet. Okay. Part C asks, how far away is the ball after 0.7 seconds? Do we plug that into the Y? No, we plug it into the X. And we're going to plug it into the X. And I almost plugged in 1.5 and told you, but they actually told me before I did it that I was making a mistake. <clears throat> we get approximately 516.068 feet. No, 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 no. I did 7 instead of 0 0.7. I missed my decimal. I was like, that does not seem right. 51.7. Feet. And see, that's why it pays off to think. Does that make sense? Tyler said no. That does not make sense. <laughs> All right. Let's look at D. D says, what is the maximum height reached by the ball? What is the maximum height reached by the ball? So what do y'all think? What do you think we need to do? What are we looking for? Okay. Height makes us think which part? X or Y? Y. We're looking for the maximum of the Y. The Y is a parabola. So here's the downer. All right. Um, in third period, I tried, well, hey, I'll just plug in my parametric equation, and I'll do second calc maximum. Well, guess what? When you're in parametric mode, it doesn't let you find the maximum. So that means you've got two choices. Either you just plug the y part in function mode and graph that parabola, or if you will recall, to find the maximum or minimum of a quadratic or a parabola, you've got a, b, and c, those constants. The x of your vertex is negative b over 2 times a. So in this case, <coughs> um, we're talking about t, because t is our independent variable. That would be negative 51.622 over 2 times negative 16. The negative b over 2 times a. That will give us the time at which it reaches the maximum. Okay, so at time 1.613. Is at its maximum, but it wants the maximum height. So then all we have to do is turn around and plug that into our height part, negative 16t squared plus 51.66, no, not 66, 622 times time plus 2.5. That gives us a maximum height of 44.138 feet. So not much higher than what we found at 1.5 seconds. So apparently the maximum occurs fairly close to one and a half seconds. Does that process that I just did make sense? Because I know it's multi-step. I want to make sure I didn't lose anybody. Okay. Find the time at which it hits the maximum, plug in the time to find the maximum. Okay? E asks, what is the total horizontal distance the ball travels? So horizontal distance makes us think X. Um, we don't have a time. 
mind you. It doesn't tell us how long it was in the air. Is there some way that we could figure out how long it was in the air? Probably. Well, yeah, there it is. Think about it for a second. So, that is the ball over here. It flies through the air and it lands. So, what's its height when it hits the ground? Zero. Zero. So, if we pick our height part, set it equal to zero, find when it hits the ground, then we can find that, we can plug that time back into our x. Now, Technically, we can do that without a calculator using the quadratic formula. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put this in function mode, type in my equation, which I already did in third period, and then I'm going to graph it. Now, it's going to look really weird because I'm in standard window right now, but I can't see the whole thing. Do I need to see the whole thing? No, I really just need to see where it equals zero. So let me find my zero over here. Uh, it looks like it's just beyond three. Somewhere between three and four. <laughs> it equals zero at three point two seven four. Three point two seven four, the ball is on the ground. That's not what I wanted to know. I wanted to know what's the total horizontal distance that it travels. So I'm just going to plug that into the x. So 90 cosine of 35 times 3.274. So it travels approximately 241.371. Now, question F. I know it seems like a lot of questions, but how much time has elapsed between the ball being hit and landing on the ground? We just answered that. Good job. We did just answer that. 3.274 seconds. We found out when it hit the ground, so we've already found that answer. Now, I'm going to let you